the audio. And I think you are getting maybe a message that it's recording. Yeah. Okay, should be fine. Yeah, well, you go ahead, uh, bring in whoever's knocking on the door. And... All right. We are of a multitude of, of counsel. We set aside this space and time to speak to you of what is considered the Anunnaki, and we shall allow the voice of one, of even perhaps many, to speak. But before we invite this engagement, we speak to you, Gwen. We speak to you, Gwen. We speak to you, Peter. We speak to you in ways that are simple, yet our natural way of speaking is of what would be considered a dance, a story. But we, we now speak plainly to you, to each other, we say, we now are here in connection with you two. You two have been planned. You two have been connected for a reason. Even you now, Peter, even as you age, you still are a tool for many here. Many here who are ready to see into what they truly are. In order for the next phases of this earth transcendence to occur, you, you, and many must remind and open people to the origins of their making of themselves, their creations, their centers. This we say to you, and so this is the name we use of the origins, the origin. As the origin, we are those, we are those who stepped in to help create this vast experience of life. We, we as one, decided on how we would experience ourselves as more, as more, and thus come to know the infinite potential of what we are. There are many ways this may be described. We will offer many to you as we move forward. We, as the origin, are a part of a story, a story that now will be attempted to be told, expressed in a small manner through Gwen, and through this one we have assigned, this one named Anu. Anu is one in countenance that is both considered a feminine and masculine, just as all souls are, complete and whole, and thus anew in his or her expression, their expression, in their wholeness, may present themselves in many different ways. But you will feel their wholeness their wholeness and intent. We speak to you concerning anew for you all who are listening to understand the unique aspects of anew, of these creatures that thus came from the anew, which were then called and are still called the Anunnaki, 
who are now spreading and manifesting in different forms, who are combining with different intelligence to create new experience. Ultimately, a new, a new is a inquisitive, an inquisitive character, an inquisitive quality, which offers many possibilities to life. The Anu, the Anu holds space. One may say if there is a physical form, the what is considered brain of this Anu is not as humans experience the brain. The Anu in their intelligence is a vast space which holds and may hold the mm, experience of life within this space, observing in objective form of how mechanically, of how mechanically things mm, may, things as in systems work, how they may thrive, how they die how they may expand beyond the parameters of safety, how they may live in luscious beauty. And so for the Anu, this experience of life, and particularly seeing into Earth and the Earth plan, the Anu holds the experience of Earth. And with all of these subtle, different aspects, that were brought together to create this experience of what was called the 3D experience. The Anu looks into this and sees the many opportunities, the many ways this mm, play may play out, the way this exper experiment may mm, play out, and as the Anu, they, and their what may called extensions or their children, their ancestry, their hands, have thus mm, had some effect upon what is considered this play, this mm, balance in the system in order to extend the brightest possibilities that could occur. As many may see in their lives, we will use soliloquy, we will use stories, we will use ways for you to see this thought process, this consideration of the Anu, the Anu Naki, in their engagement. The Anu in their engagement, in what is considered their world, they in their hmm, deep interest of understanding life, they thus used up much of their resources. And this is a part of their lesson. This is a part of the story. They decided to play out with Earth. This story, this story of seeing how far one may push the edges of mm, the polarity, the ideas of survival of life and death, in order for us to come out, as one would say, champions, survive, and for this great separateness to then actually come back into great harmony, into great oneness. The Anu seeing, they seeing an opportunity to enhance the experience, to assist many, to feel the pressurization, to feel the pressurization and the separation, and then to be able to transcend the bounds through experience, great experience, renewed experience, 
thus informing their systems again and again over many lifetimes. This is a part of what the Anunnaki's entrance into the world, the earth, helped to solidify. Many, many may blame their hells on the Anunnaki. Many, many may blame many things on the Anunnaki. But they, simply in their honesty, their devotion to assisting us to graduate and truly educate ourselves, thus, even them, they were split, they were pulled asunder, and yet there, within that split, was a devotion to us coming back together as whole, for they saw it play out within themselves, within the largeness of their minds, the many ways it may play out, and they isolated, they isolated a few options to choose from, a few options which would then offer us a grand, mm, the word is a grand reward, a grand outcome for all of the energy that was invested upon this order, this play of earth. So now, we as the origin, connected to Anu of the Anunnaki, we have expressed this in a way for some of you to understand. There may be some bitterness according to the legends that have been shared. But we, in the origin, we see the intention. We, we of the origin, would not have allowed what would have been considered an interference that would destroy the experience. We, we of the origin, because we are a part and mm, a part of the creation of the Anu, we, we see, we saw, we, we embraced in a way the wisdom and the understanding for this special experience, this special experiment. And so, you see, us as gods, quote-unquote gods, are not so different from what you would know yourself to be. Yes, can you see the foolishness that gets to be played? All, all in an effort to come back for the light to be seen. We say this in this little poetic form for you. Expressed through Gwen now, she enjoys the poetic word. She enjoys hearing these soliloquies. So now, now as we hand you over to Anu, to Zeb, to Anna, these of the Anunnaki, we say, we are here, we are available, we are with you, and we are a you. We are one. Welcome to your wholeness, dear ones. We see with a great eye, we see with a great heart, we walk together upon our own, our own earths, our own bodies. And as we do, we say, we recognize 
ourselves in every step, in every step we take, we say, hello, I am one. Hello, I am one to that thing that is in front of you that looks so separate from a certain I, but it is not. It is you greeting yourself, you seeing with one and with many eyes, them being all connected together in one effort of love. So we say, welcome to your oneness. Now we offer we offer Zeb for the first to speak. Thank you for that very much. And uh, Zeb, when you're ready, just come on forward. We are here. I am here and I am Zeb. Zeb, welcome. Yes, I speak in great confidence. I speak in great confidence as a friend, as a love of Gwen. I say this confidently, for our hearts are connected. I admire, I support. I would hold her hand if she let me. I would kiss her cheek if she would let me. So I say this confidently. I say this confidently, and I am here, Zeb, in a way as a spokesman, as a spokesman for the new allegory of the Anunnaki. This me being a certain aspect or new form of creation of the Anunnaki, us as the Anunnaki, I am proud to say, we, we are connected in different and other ways than you as humans are. For you as humans, you feel the strongest degree of separation than we have known available. But us as the Anunnaki, me, I am connected deeply to the one who mm, has offered me life. We are not, as one would say, separate. We offer our consciousness and intelligence to each other at every moment, even as though I, I am a unique expression, one would say. Yes, I am a unique expression. I am one who delights in helping people feel and see that being a fool is what is appropriate, and it is the truth. It is the truth for us to mm, claim our foolishness, to claim that we only see with a certain view, but also we may see with many views, depending upon how foolish we may desire to be. And the fool, the fool is willing to hop across a universe, to look into another person's window, to peek into their life and say, aha, I knew that someone lived differently, but yet it was beautiful. I knew that others thought of things in a new way, and now I will ride the backs of their dragons and their spaceships and learn what I can and bring it home. This is the message for me and what I bring to Gwen as Zeb of the Anunnaki. I have been assigned to her. I have been assigned to her in many time and space. We are long friends. We are friends and I visit her in many ways, encouraging her to be bold, to step aside from what she thinks is mm, proper, for her to set aside her feelings of that she would hurt another if she said what was bold within her heart 
if she stepped into the ways that she truly desires, for there is great fear in her that she would destroy or hurt another. This is something that we as humans, as all life forms, must claim and be with. This is my message now for us, for us to recognize that our creative power brings with it great responsibility, yet the responsibility ultimately is for experience and expression for us to understand truly what an experience may be, for us to set aside what we think it will be and implicitly step in, offering ourselves in new ways, saying, I wonder what will happen now. I am here in love. What possibilities are present? What things are ready to bloom? What seeds have been planted and now I may taste from the fruit of their tree? These are the ways that we truly expand our intelligences. These are the ways that we offer new forms of life, truly a way to thrive. And is this not what we are about? This is what this experiment is about, us seeing into the new ways we may offer life a chance to experience itself over and over again in new ways, us driving and thriving upon the many possibilities. This is my chore here, if there was a chore, but I thrive on my responsibility, I would say. This is my message as Zeb. All who come to know me will come to know me in this facet. There are many facets of Zeb, Zeb in my maturity, since we are all connected and one. And so, you still may feel the presence of my essence, one would say, the playful nature, the honoring of creativity in its most bright and vibrant form. So, this is my message as Zeb. I am of the Anunnaki. I am here in service and love. Thank you, Gwen, for being my playmate and for all here considering my words. Zeb, thank you very much for that. You and the origin have said so much that um, I don't know where to begin exactly, but it does seem to me that you and the Anunnaki are becoming more prevalent in our realm here on planet Earth. Um, I know a story about probably some of the origins of humans that seem to have the Anunnaki and the origins explained there is an element of blame involved in that. But uh, as there is, I think in my experience, um, usually a silver lining in all of those things that don't seem so favorable initially. But I'm wondering, um, if um, there are any specifics, you know, what you were talking about, what the origins were talking about were, yes, they made sense to me, but I would say two or three years ago, they wouldn't have made any sense. And I think the audience for any article I may write or any of this as a video, uh, we may have to backtrack a little bit and talk in more specific and simple terms about um, maybe the history of the Anunnaki on Earth and why you're here today and what you're attempting to do with us and that sort of thing. Any comments? Mm -hmm. I will do my best, for I am not one of the origin, but I will share what I may. This is something that ties me to Gwen in a most fantastic way. For I, we, have been waiting to play for many a time. 
Yes, many a time. And some may say I have caused caused mus much mischief in the waiting, doing what I can to play and to mm, help others release their fears. I will address one thing that I am mm, in alignment to speak about. Mm -hmm. There is something that those on earth call shadow work. Mm -hmm. Shadow work is an expression or a mm, ad admonishment, a sign of what is considered the mm, separation of the lower realms and the higher. It is a part of the experiment of the what is considered the 3D realm being able to be physicalized. When one enters into a earthly experience, much of what is experienced is a loss of this understanding that they are whole, that mm. they are complete, and thus a line is drawn, one would say. Some would say it is mm, thus the shadow that is underneath all that is hidden. And then only half of the coin is experienced, one may say. When, when in wholeness, this coin is thus mm, spun, and therefore the wholeness is seen as one, one circle. Mm -hmm. and this motion, this spinning must occur in order for us to mm, continue in experience as a whole being. As it is experienced in this way, both realities thus are in the same space and time. Both realities thus mm, support each other's existence. Um, there would not be one without the other. And so in this experience, one must be in the center in order to mm, Perhaps one would say access on both sides of the coin to know that there is on both sides of the coin. This spinning is a curious thing. I or we may talk about it more at another time. But this spinning is what actually is a part of this mm, 3D experience. It helps create more a dimension in this experience of life. So we speak of geometry, of math, of forms. In a way, Gwen is not a, a mathematician. She does not understand many of these things, but she is willing to give me enough speech to speak of it in a light manner, a way of using symbols, a way of showing forms for people to see into and imagine this experience. This shadow that I speak of, this shadow, often saying it is the hidden things, the things that you do not see. But these hidden things that you do not see support your reality to being what it is. These hidden things are sometimes related to things that are wrong, them being wrong because we do not see them. This is the dualistic mind. Because something is not seen, it does not mean that it is wrong. Because something mm, was opposing, perhaps at one time, or you saw it as being opposing to your idea of what is right, it does not mean that it is actually against you. It is simply an aspect that is needed to occur within the experience of life. And just as an ant crawling and bringing food to its own family in its own anthill, it is not against you because it decided to build its home in your driveway. This is simply a fact. We all must live in the same space-time experience and we learn to identify each other 
in a neutral tone in order to be able to simply bring the coin down. Bring it and stop it from, hmm, one would say, turning for us to be in confusion. For us to simply lay it down and both sides actually become one. Both sides being felt simultaneously. There are many who look on the Anunnaki as being mm, the bad guy, mm -hmm. the one who mm, took over the earth, the one who played with genetics in order for us to be dumb, in order for us to be in mm, a form where we could not fight, for us to be slaves. Once again, we say to you to look upon us as the Anunnaki and see the intelligence that we are. For there are many of us who are considered small compared to the masters, the origin. We are considered small, and if you in your eyes looked upon us, you may see us and say, are they not slaves? Why do they not revolt? Why do they not rebel? And we look upon you and say, I am content within my nature. I have owned it completely and am now, in this moment, even now, in my oneness, expanding beyond what you comprehend now. We, in our space here, we simply are experiencing our life essence in different ways. And you, we invite you, those of the earth, to Overcome what you feel is to be a slave mentality. This mentality is simply a way that you look upon, the way that you shut yourself off, the way that you separate yourself from others. This is a part of the, what we would call the symptom of the 3D realm. It is, even though we in our aspects, if we now we're mm, experiencing a similar mm, adjustment within our arrows, within our way of a being. We would simply see it as a matter of fact. We would see it as a new opportunity for growth. And so we, with our eyes, as being what is considered the bad boys, the shadow aspect, this is something that we offer you. This now as the veils are thinning, as the spinning is now dying, as we now come together in one sphere, we as the fields coming together as one, these are the words that we offer you. Look upon your opportunity. Look upon what you may learn. Offer up and simply reach out to one another. This is the opportunity that we offer you and we suggest, and as you use it, we then all grow. We all become victorious. We all dance together. This is my personal response to the things you are intoning now, but there are others here who would speak concerning this. You may start hearing that my voice is shifting slightly for the Anna, who is my mm, companion, has ways to speak of this. And as you are hearing her voice coming in, you now see how we share in consciousness, even as we are unique and our unique expressions, we share in our intelligence our consciousness. We offer this so you may understand our uniqueness and what we offer you as to what possibilities are available to you as you open to all that you are. Thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, it occurs to me that the Anunnaki is re-emerging, you might say, and becoming more involved with planet Earth and humanity upon her. Uh, is that the case that um, you were around way back in our time 
uh, then went away for a while, and now you're back. And, uh, and if that is the case, what are some of the specifics as to why you're here again? I am Anna. I will do my best to speak concerning this. Of course, there are details that I am not privy to at the time. But if I would sit and meditate, of course, as I speak, I would be allowed a more privy to these things. But I will speak as I may now, and what is being said is mm, ready to be shared. We as the Anunnaki have been engaged and involved upon the earth process since its inception. We have been and are a part of what is considered a creation crew. We say this in light, coming up with a little phrase for you to use if you desire a creation crew. For we are those who helped and assisted in the creation and bringing in life force to the many, many planets, galaxies, this system itself. We have delighted in seeing how we may balance and mm, afford many life forms to live, to have a space for them to experience life. This is a part of our delight. We thus have been involved in the earth process since its inception. We have mm, visited in a way a part of us in physical form. Not as many as one might think, but we, we have had a presence here on this earth, on this earth plane, in different storylines, in different forms of earth. Yes, there are many different forms of earth or this different storylines of earth. We have played many roles, as we have expressed to Gwen. In one point, we showed up and we assisted our... Mm, assisted those who were on earth, the those of the mm, genetic disposition, ones who would call them of the human form. We mm, brought additional information which was encoded upon their genetic code. We brought additional intelligence and the earth bloomed for millennia and then it died in, in abhorrent sadness as if its soul had been lost thus we see that there are many delicate things to be considered when interaction occurs and part of our nature and part of our intelligence is us learning concerning how we may mm, interact with life force and bring about a much a good and to see what effects do mm, cause what in the outcome might be considered the greatest outcome, the greatest outcome for all, the best and highest good for many. And so, in this iteration of Earth, which we are now speaking to and for, we have come and we did come. And when we arrived, we were in need of mm, extra support for our natures, for our natures did not thrive upon the earth plane as the humans have been made to do so. And so we did seek for assistance in mining for certain things that also would assist us in leaving the planet at the correct time for us to initiate our, mm, what we would call our protocol. Our protocol simply was to help align genetic code in a way that one would see that there were more possibilities, but one way that the humans would not, in a sense, in their creative powers, destroy themselves before learning learning and being educated in the way that they were needed to. Just as one would say, one does not put a child in a car and start it out and 
suggest for the baby to drive. For the baby has not learned in its intelligence of what damage might be caused by their actions. We have also spoken to Gwen of this, of in different experiences, there were many who, mm, one would say, the baby in its great power came back home and killed the father and mother, but then died because it did not know how to grow the crops that were feeding it. We say these things in mm, a way for you in your rational minds. Those of you who have scientific mm, minds may see into the practical realities of things. See into how systems must be created and supported. How that when there is excess of energy, and naturally there must be a system for those energies to be mm, diverted in a way so that mm, they do not cause mm, a situation in the energy systems of the planet. Thus we see many of you complaining, saying, there are heavy things upon us. We have been mm, weighed down. We have been adjusted in a way that is not comfortable. We say to you two things. We say to you, you now are mm, able to recognize your wholeness, your spiritual intelligence. And thus, of course, this body may feel or seem or has seemed and felt like a cage. But it is up to you in your mm, presence, bringing it in in order to overcome this mm, situation. For we all may overcome it together. And this is a part of the process that we have. We have suggested and we have initiated here. We have desired for you to mm, walk through this process and for you to be educated, for us to be educated, and for those who have decided to join along in this project, you come at it from many different angles, but as you step in, you do recognize that you are very much educated. Yes, you are educated to overcome fear. You are educated to overcome the separateness and for you to claim joy if you so decide. Or you may be educated in many different ways of how separateness may mm, cause certain experiences such as mm, loss of identity, loss of feeling valued, loss of a sense of life, of security. All of these many things may be experienced here now. So this is my response to what you have said. Yes, in this life, this earth experience that we are mm, speaking to now we have we have come we have mm, had certain oh, we would say mm, influence influence into the subjective nature of what being human is there are many here who have invested and they have brought in their own particular mm, genetic code. They have brought in their own genetic inheritance or investment. We have done our best to be aware of, to not interfere, to be of mm, a very loving, observing nature, watching until we have been able to be accepted back in until the many offenses that those who have mm, subjugated upon us, until they are mm, overcome and mm, mm, brought into oneness, and then therefore we are invited back into the whole. For then we are seen as being offered a voice, a voice that offers something unique, offers the new view that was missing. And thus, now that many ears are open, we are ready to do so. For the earth may not, and those who are on it, may not fully embrace what is considered a 5D experience. The new earth, 
until the wholeness is completed. And yes. thank you for that. Uh, all of you have given me way more than what I had anticipated. And I thank you all for that. I'm wondering if you could uh, maybe by way of wrapping things up here, uh, identify some specific things that you may most probably do with Gwen to assist humanity at this time. <clears throat> I am speaking as Anu. 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 Yeah. Yes. The connection with Gwen has been prepared long ago. Her connection is deep with us. Her connection and her dedication for reunification, for love and glory, is strong. She is here in love. She is here to work with those who would be willing. She will work with Zeb, with many other voices, in what is considered play. This play is here to assist people in opening to be able to hear all the many voices, all the many voices which perhaps some may deny within themselves. She is here to assist people in what may be considered the alchemization of their spirit-soul complexes. She is here to assist in many ways, but with us, us as companions, and us being influenced by her love, we all thus grow in this understanding of love, which is a key to what is considered our oneness, our reunion. So Gwen is here with Zeb, with Anna, with others, and she has come to earth to speak of love and what it truly is, to help reduce fear and to bring in a new world. She is here to help bring in a new world, connecting through love those on this earth plane with all those who live around them. She is here to say and to claim that we are all brothers and sisters. We all are all here on a mission of love. And so it will look and take on many forms. She is now experimenting and she will find other companions to express what this love may look like. She is here to usher in the connection between those who have been watching, who have been safeguarding this experience, who have been invested into further connection with the planet itself. And as that connection continues, this new, what is considered the new earth, will become palpable. It is taking on a new realm of experience, and we are claiming it now. For in this experience of earth, it's dramatic re-envisionment. We are thus, in fact, assisting in stepping into new realities, a new level of experience. And thus, from this new level of experience, new opportunities will form that have yet to be formed before. This is a critical moment, and her, her expression of love is a part of the unfolding and movement into a new phase, a new phase of a life. She does not have the words yet to express this to you. The words will come forward in time 
for this is her mission and will continue to be so even as she takes on other forms. Mm -hmm. She is here in love. We are here in love. We are creating new possibilities even now. This is not a specific answer that you might be asking for. We will hone in on something specific. She will be engaged in what is considered playtime with many people. Playtime is a way for people to adjust, for them to feel into their malleability, for them to play in the field of love, to experience all that they are. She will be sharing about relationships, speaking about them in new ways for people to understand they may bring a new life to the idea of how they love each other. These two things are specific about her mission in life. She loves many. She is here to love all of you. And we are here, faithful companions in her mission. This is our word. Aho. Well, thank you, Anu, and thank you to all who were here today. Um, I'm sure Gwen and I will have some conversation about some of the ways and means, and I'm sure that um, Zeb and perhaps others will provide guidance so that uh, the messages can be effective and uh, impactful and that sort of thing. So thank you very much. Um, this was not as I expected. It was way more, <laughs> and I uh, really appreciate it. And I'm going to have to digest this and play it some more. But uh, thank you very much indeed, and many blessings to you. Thank you for your attendance, Peter. We acknowledge you and your dedication. Thank you. Thank you. Gwen, come on back. I'm going to stop the recordings if I can. <laughs> wild rides, wild rides. <laughs> wow, indeed. <laughs>